Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications, and check out the latest items in the Dark Web Deacon merch store. There is a link in the video description below, and become a true Dark Web enthusiast. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday. Who is working on 6G? How fast will it be? When will it be available to the average user? These are some of the questions we're going to tackle in this video. With 5G networks still being deployed around the world in many areas of the globe, also still using 4G and even 3G networks, 6G is obviously several years away, but the details and test results of the technology are beginning to emerge. So let's start to speculate on what will 6G offer and how it will impact our lives. 6G refers to 6th generation wireless technology. But first, let's do a quick recap of 1G to 5G. Now for a brief history of 1G to 5G mobile network technology. In the 1980s, we started with first generation or 1G, and it provided basic analog voice communication for mobile networks. Then in the 1990s came second generation. This allowed digital voice communication. The move from analog to digital improved overall call quality and network reliability. Then in the early 2000s, we moved into third generation or 3G. This not only delivered better voice communication, but also mobile data communication, laying the groundwork for future mobile apps. Then in 2010 came 4G. This delivered mobile broadband. This allowed for the explosion of mobile apps across smartphones and also the ability to stream content. And now currently we are in a fifth generation or 5G transition in the 2020s. This also enables increased bandwidth, anywhere from 10 to 100 times current 4G capabilities, which will be used to enable things like virtual reality, augmented reality, better streaming, but also real-time streaming content. So for example, a doctor in India and a doctor in New York City could potentially collaborate in real time on a real operation because of 5G technology's reliability and bandwidth capabilities. Early stage 6G development is underway around the world. The FCC took the first steps of opening up terahertz wave spectrum, frequencies between 95 gigahertz and three terahertz citing that it will, quote, expedite the deployment of new services in the spectrum above 95 gigahertz. Keep in mind, currently, 5G is in the 600 megahertz range, the 40 gigahertz range. 6G will be several times more powerful than 5G without a doubt. For simplicity's sake, the higher the hertz, the faster and more bandwidth and more data that can be transferred. And with every new generation, the latency of communication is lowered. Latency refers to the delay, for example, you experience when you click on a movie to start streaming. When will 6G come out? It's been typical for a new mobile network standard to take the spotlight every decade or so. That means that 6G networks will roll out sometime around 2030, or at least that's what most telecom companies will be running 6G trials, and when we'll see phone manufacturers start to tease 6G capable phones. How fast will 6G be? Well, there's no telling right now, but even with 5G, we're seeing speeds of up to one gigabits per second in ideal circumstances. 6G will absolutely top that. How much is still an open question? We may see several hundred gigabits per second speeds and even ranges in the terabytes are possible. Samsung Electronics claims they have tested some basic 6G technology already and have been able to track it at rates of 50 times faster than that of 5G. So who is actively working on 6G currently? Well, there's several players. In 2018, universities in Finland announced the funding of their 6G flagship program to research materials, antennas, software, and more that will be required to launch 6G. 6G research began at Virginia Tech in the United States with companies like Samsung and LG. Japan is planning on launching 6G by 2030. Addis launched the Next Generation Alliance in late 2020 to aid North America's advancement towards 6G and beyond. 
Members include Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, Microsoft, Samsung, Facebook, Apple, Google, Ericsson, Nokia, Qualcomm, and others. China sent a 6G satellite into orbit in late 2020 to test ultra high speed um, 6G using terahertz wavelengths. Apple began looking for engineers in early 21, and excuse me, in early 2021 to develop 6G. Also in South Korea, the Ministry of Science and ICT held a 6G strategy meeting in mid 2021. And finally, India's Ministry for Communication say that the country could develop 6G technology by 2024. So all over the world, the high-tech countries are heavily invested in 6G technology. What are the 6G benefits? Anyone that uses network connections right now will definitely see improvements in overall speed, quality, and reliability with 6G networks. I believe 6G will be a key foundational need and driver for virtual reality, augmented reality, and for the future metaverse to take hold. Whether you think a Ready Player One type metaverse is good for society, we can leave for another time. 6G will also make connection anywhere a reality. Put AI at your fingertips, allow intelligent interconnected robots working in factories, allow for vehicle to vehicle communications, and much, much more. Also, as we've seen in the past with 3G, 4G, and 5G, as the capacity of networks increase, so do its applications. This will cause an amazing effect where new products and services can be built to utilize 6G's bandwidth and other improvement features to their fullest extent. So what are some of the issues with 6G? Like we're seeing now with 5G networks being extremely localized due to the inherent limits of millimeter waves, the same problem will be seen in 6G networks. For example, the range of terahertz radiation is around 10 meters which is much too short for significant 6G coverage. So we can't be installing 6G towers every 10 minutes around the world. It's not feasible. And because of this shortfall, 6G is by no means a sure thing, unless some practical implementation hurdles can be overcome to amplify the signal over a more reasonable distance. Unless the cell companies around the world decide to make us all human cell towers somehow, bouncing signals off each other. With 6G, I also expect the ongoing health debate around cell phone radiation to ramp up, and it would be prudent not to assume that they are all conspiracy theories. First, almost all studies that cite cellular radiation having no impact on biology are looking primarily at 2G, 3G, and 4G systems, and a little bit of 5G. There's still a lot more research that needs to be done. Second. The Department of Defense sponsored studies in the late 90s and early 2000s looking, the looking at the use of millimeter wavelengths as a non-lethal weapon. The active denial technology that the military employs uses very high frequency millimeter waves, around 94 gigahertz, to produce an intense burning sensation on the skin. The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection have used this research to set safety limits for the use of 5G millimeter wave to 40 gigahertz at most. 6G will have a frequency above 40 gigahertz and in the same range used as military technology. 6G is still in the non-ionizing spectrum, but we are closer to the ionizing spectrum than we have ever been before. What this means is that 6G radiation most likely does not have enough energy to break apart DNA and cause disease like cancer. Unlike ionizing radiation like gamma rays, x-rays, and UV rays from the sun, the radiation in the ionizing spectrum is strong enough to rip apart molecules and atoms and definitely cause cell damage without question. So will you be rushing out to buy a 6G enabled phone in 2030 to enter the metaverse? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.